Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Janet Ray, Dean of the Attleboro Campus. Thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate the 20th anniversary. Over the past two decades, the Attleboro Campus has transformed from a vision into a vibrant hub of academic excellence and community impact. Our journey reflects not just educational achievements, but the strong sense of community that defines us. We've become more than just a place to learn. We're a space where friendships are forged, passions discovered, and dreams realized. Our campus thrives on collaboration among students, staff, faculty, and community members, fostering growth and support. Thank you so much to everyone who has contributed to the Attleboro campus over these 20 years. Your dedication has shaped our success. Here's to the next 20 years of excellence, growth, and community. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Bristol Community College President, Laura L. Douglas. Let's see if we can't make that a little easier to hear. Is that better? There we go. Well, thank you, Dr. Ray. Thank you for your leadership of this wonderful campus. It is an honor to stand here today celebrating the contributions and commitment that has shaped this campus for the last two decades. Each location that we have at the college has its own story, history, and pride. But we all have the same mission, to provide an accessible, innovative, and inclusive education that prepares students to navigate and succeed in our ever-changing world. However, we cannot do it alone. It is the con continued support of so many people over the years. And in this room tonight, we have many people who have made the Attleboro campus a success. I'd like to give a special thanks to some of those who are here tonight including our chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Joan Medeiros. The third president of Bristol Community College, Dr. John J. Spraga and his wife, Joanne. Senator Paul Feeney. Representative Stephen Howitt. <laughs> Representative James Hawkins. <laughs> and Mayor Kathleen DeSimone. In the back, yes. <laughs> right in the back in case you didn't see your hand. So 20 years in Attleboro, it's very hard to believe how far we've come. Before Attleboro became a reality, our students had to travel significant distances. The vision began with efforts of key individuals, President Jack Spraga, the chair of our Board of Trustees at the time, Don Smith, and Max Volterra, as well as many others. Their dedication was instrumental in making this campus a reality. The Bristol Foundation secured the funds necessary to purchase this building, demonstrating an unprecedented level of commitment that is carried on today. The success of the Attleboro campus is a testament to the incredible collaboration between city officials, state legislators, and the business community, which continues today. Attleboro has consistently served our students by offering pathways to an associate degree, whether students wish to go on to the workforce or transfer to obtain a bachelor's degree. And we are very fortunate to have Bridgewater State University on our campus. Our very own mayor was located at this campus for many years and prior to that at Bristol Community College. So we are so well connected and we are so grateful for your support, Mayor DeSimone. Thank you to our generous supporters over the years. We have been, uh, thanks to, that, to our generous supporters, we have been able to upgrade our campus. Notably, we have opened the state-of-the-art 
Earl R. Holden Microbiology Laboratory down on the first floor, and our brand new Library Learning Commons, which is just here in the back. And if you haven't had a chance to go and peek in and walk around, I encourage you to do that. The Library Learning Commons was made possible by a $1 million grant from the Robert F. Stoico First Fed Charitable Foundation. This is the largest gift in the history of the Attleboro campus. Having a campus in Attleboro, Attleboro is so crucial, it makes college accessible and achievable for many, bringing education within reach. Now with free college in Massachusetts, Mass Educate and Mass Reconnect, our community has even more opportunities and we are so grateful for the support of our legislators. Thank you. The success of the Attleboro campus also stems from the dedication of those who believe in our community and the power of higher education. We are proud to honor some of them tonight. I would like to recognize Kathy Torpy Garganta, Bristol alumna and, and professor of dental hygiene. Kathy, Kathy is standing right behind me, but I want you to raise your hand. <laughs> Kathy was the first director of the Attleboro campus, and she is credited with helping to build the community connections the college still has today. Uh, when Kathy was here, everyone told me that you would never know that Kathy lived any place else other than Attleboro. And we did not expect Kathy and her husband Kevin to be here today because they're supposed to be in Florida, but thanks to the hurricane, they were delayed and we have them at our celebration tonight and I could not be so uh, any more pleased. So thank you, Kathy. When the campus campus opened, sitting by Kathy's side, was an individual who was and still is instrumental in the success of our students. She's right back there. She has been with the campus for the past 20 years and we would like to recognize her tonight. Lori Peroni, come on up. Thank you for navigating the Attleboro campus through the years. Your steadfast commitment, willingness to always jump in and do what it takes, multitask and guide our students no matter what they need is commendable. Thank you so very much. Take the photo up. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you to everyone who has been a part of this journey, our dedicated staff, faculty, elected officials, supportive community, and our generous donors. Now I am very pleased to introduce Bristol Community College's third president, Dr. Jack Spraga. Well, thank you, President number four and President number three. Uh, it uh, was quite an honor uh, for us, our team, to put together this venture in Attleboro. Not too many people were convinced of the soundness of that uh, project, but I was, and we had great, great support across the community. Uh, still remember the days when Chair of the Board of Trustees, Don Smith, and I and mayor at the time, Judy Robbins, we would go sloshing through water-filled cellars of mills looking for a location uh, for us. Uh, and uh, Steve Kenyon was very important to us as well as the Vice President of uh, Financial Affairs. And we, uh, we did come across this building. Uh, it didn't look like that, uh, it didn't look like this at the time, but uh, it's worked out very well. Uh, I can't say enough about the support that we had, not only Mayor Robbins, but all kinds of other people who from the community stepped up, uh, also from the uh, Bristol Community College uh, uh, campus and uh, all of the colleagues in learning that we have. 
Uh, Joanne Pelletier is here, and she had to connect the whole the whole building, uh, standing in water, I think, at some point, uh, Joanne. But uh, it's worked out very well. I can't say enough about Ron and Jerry and other people from the community uh, who have helped. Uh, we couldn't have made it also without the uh, support of our legislature. And uh, you have some members that uh, President uh, Douglas in, uh, introduced tonight. Uh, we have many others who came to the forefront. It was not easy. Uh, I must tell you that uh, we worked in cooperation with Bridgewater State College. Uh, President Dana Molaferia played an instrumental role in our behind the scenes in arranging uh, the, all of the necessary political support that we needed, uh, as well as, uh, at the time, uh, Fred Clark, who was chair of the Board of Higher Education and later is now uh, uh, ch president of uh, uh, Bridgewater Co uh, College University. I, I think that uh, we would not have been successful uh, without the success, without the support of uh, Dana Moloferia and Fred Clark. There were not a lot of people up in Boston uh, who, including our supposed allies, who were not at all crazy about the idea of uh, opening up another campus, uh, which was seen as a financial headache for the state to bear. And I must tell you that uh, Fred in his position as Board of Higher Education Chair and Dana with his wonderful support, uh, we were able to push together uh, the, what we needed to make it a success. Fred later moved, uh, I, I think he took a promotion to be president of Bridgewater uh, University. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, I'm going on too long, but uh, it's, it's been a wonderful occasion. I can't believe it's been 20 years. Uh, most of us looked exactly the same as we did 20 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Kathy Garganta as the leader of the campus is instrumental in generating the support throughout the community. And uh, you see the wonderful things that we have today. And I wanna thank uh, President Douglas for her continuing support, as well as uh, all of the instrumental people in the uh, president's cabinet and all of the officers and faculty. It was very important to have full-time faculty come here and invest in the Attleboro campus. So I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, it's a symbol of what we've come to stand for, uh, a presence in Attleboro, a way that we're committed to student success it was not about ego or some crazy idea. It was about providing educational opportunities to a community that was underserved at the time. And that is why we were able to push forward. So I thank you. I thank the mayor for all your great help uh, uh, before and after you became mayor. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I thank you all for coming and I uh, look forward to a great night. Thank you. So thank you, Jack. It is an honor to have you and Joanne here this evening. It's also an honor to have Don Smith here with us tonight, who was our chair of the board at the time. Uh, Don served as our board of trustees for 10 years, nine years as chair, and he is currently serving on the college's foundation board. So Don, we welcome you to come forward and say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You know, it's hard when you're put in third position behind two college presidents. And you never know what they're going to say, so it's hard to think about what you're going to say. Jack took away all my thunder. <laughs> but, uh, no. Such a good job. No, no. But, you know, we're very lucky, this community college, to have two great leaders who are at the helm of this college uh, with Jack um, and um, Laura. Uh, Jack is now retired. Laura, if you not didn't know this, is retiring at the end of December. And I was on the search committee when we hired her. And when she told me she was from Des Moines, Iowa, and I said, Jesus, what, how can you compare Des Moines, Iowa to Fall River in Attleboro? And uh, 
And then she gave me a great education and she's a superb president. And, and one more thing, um, they surround themselves with good people. You know, very successful people that I've met in my life surround themselves with good people. And uh, a lot of them are here tonight. I see Joan Pelletier back there who runs the IT department. She's a graduate of, of Bristol Community College. Dana Molafarier, who was the president of Bridgewater, graduated from Cape Cod Community College. I graduated from the community college and uh, joined the army after that and I went to Yukon where the president's parents were both professors and, and uh, Laura grew up in, uh, in Mansfield, Connecticut. So there's a lot in common. Um, it was tricky to get here, it really was. Um, I have a background in city planning. I was the planning director. Joan and I moved here back in the early 80s and um, I stayed for about five or six years. And during that time, we always wanted to get a community college here in the city. And uh, it just wasn't in the cards. And I think timing is everything. But uh, in my advice to the mayor, mayor is trying some creative solutions to build some elderly housing and um, a senior center. And they're coming up with a, a plan, which I think could work. And uh, it's a plan that worked here. Uh, when we, Judy Robbins, if anybody knew Judy, uh, she was tenacious, she was very smart, she graduated from Stanford, um, she was really direct. If you didn't know Julie, uh, Judy, you'd be like, whoa, you know, back off lady. But, uh, but she was great, she really was great. And her and I would jump in the car and we'd drive to the state house. And by that time she had had a stroke. And so we used her handicap sticker to park right next to the state house, it was, it was great. And, um, and then we met Jack, and then we just kept pestering everyone. Uh, Betty Poirier was, was instrumental. Uh, John Lepper, our state representative. Uh, Cheryl Jakes, uh, I have a great story, uh, Senator. Um, Sonia Diaz-Chang, your colleague. She was a young 22-year-old assistant to Cheryl Jakes, and uh, she was instrumental in getting us a $50,000 grant to do a study to see if it was feasible uh, through DCAM to build uh, this facility. And uh, I arrived early and Sonia was sitting there and, she, and before Judy and Jack showed up, who was at the, the bank here, Bristol County Savings Bank, and she looked really nervous. And I said, Sonia, what's wrong? And she goes, uh, my father's taken off in a space shuttle in about an hour. <laughs> Uh, her father was Franklin Chang, who has been on the space shuttle for seven, seven flights, you know, and now she is the senator from Roxbury? Yes, three years. No longer. No longer. Oh, okay, well, so a lot of players involved. But basically, I remember that meeting so well because the uh, consultants had come back with an estimate, and it was huge, huge numbers. And I had a lot of construction experience. Judy had some construction experience. Um, Steve Kenyon, our uh, vice president for administration, he had a lot of experience and we knew the numbers were somewhat inflated. And I think the message from the state was, we're not gonna do this. So in the meantime, um, this building came available. And Steve, I don't even know what it, it cost us. Let me recognize Steve, Steve, stand up. I want, I want to, Steve, stand up, stand up. So, so through, through two administrations, Steve has been the whiz guy financially. Is that correct, Mr. Madam President, Mr. President? And um, he was, he's been very creative. And Mayor, I think you need to talk to him. He's been very creative in coming up with a solution to make this work. And what we talked about was our foundation um, buying this building and then the college paying us rent and the banks have, you know, uh, Pat Murray, who is now chairman of the board of Bristol County Savings Bank is on our board of the foundation. Uh, Nick Crisp, who is the president of Bay Coast Bank is on our board and they stepped up and they said, we'll finance it. So community banks financing a community college, you know, what else can you ask for? And as far as I know, the college hasn't missed a payment in 20 years. Is that right, Steve? Yeah. 
So, you know, and, and then we're also collecting rent from Bridgewater. Right, Mayor? Yeah. We are, so, so. Um, anyway, that's about all I have to say. It's not an easy task. Uh, if you believe in something, uh, you have to stick with it. You have to push hard. You can't give up because there are a lot of people who just want to knock you down. And uh, it's, it's a dream come true. And it's part of the whole quality of life for this area. And it's not, you know, it's called the Attleboro Campus. But um, we had a, a student who graduated from North Attleboro High who graduated from North Attleboro High and walked out with an associate's degree at the same time. So think about that. He saved his parents like $100,000, right? I mean, and you know, many students go to school for the first two years, they don't know what they want to be. And, and you're showing out all this dough. You know, it's sort of important to think that way. You know, so, um, and then Dave Sawyer, our superintendent of schools, is on a Janet Ray's committee. And by the way, I just want to give accolades to Janet, Dean Janet, Dr. Janet Ray. Here she is. Um, because she came in on this campus during the height of the pandemic. And enrollments everywhere went down. And I'm sure at some point she'd go home very discouraged. Uh, but now enrollment's up. She looks happier. And uh, I am not, Jack is always wearing a suit. I didn't wear a suit tonight because Joan and I are going to a movie. So if, if any of you have not bought tickets, the Manhattan Short Film Festival is tonight. And uh, Judy, can you just stand up for a minute? Now, Judy runs our foundation. She's great. And she'd like to meet all of you. And, and, and one more thing I thought about. If this was a major project for Jack, our existing president has a major project in New Bedford, Maui, which is the North American Wind Institute. And you've been reading about all those huge turbines going up in the ocean. Well, someone's got to train those people to fix them, to replace them, to make them work, continue going. Bristol Community College is doing the training. So um, I talked to someone in the elevator industry the other day, and their people are very happy because they're getting double overtime to go out to the ocean and fix those things. So thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Don. It's always wonderful to hear those stories. So we are also very fortunate to have our mayor with us this evening. Uh, she's just been a vital part of our community and a true champion for higher education for many years. So uh, as many of you know, before stepping into this role as mayor, she dedicated nearly eight years to representing Bridgewater State University as the director of the Attleboro campus. Her office was just around the corner and I always love coming to say hi to Kathleen. So um, great to have her back tonight. Um, and um, uh, she was also the basic education uh, director here at Bristol Community College before she hopped over to Bridgewater State. So please join me in welcoming our mayor back to the Attleboro campus, a great champion of higher education. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Douglas, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to Attleboro. I am honored to be here to celebrate the 20th anniversary, anniversary of Bristol Community College's Attleboro campus. I am proud to say that I was here to celebrate the 10th anniversary, and I very much hope to be here for the 30th anniversary. Like most of you, my support and love for Bristol's Attleboro campus goes back many years, and Dr. Douglas stole a little bit of my thunder, but I'm gonna tell my story anyway. Um, and so does my commitment to helping people make a better life through education. And I am honored to have worked with and served both Dr. Sprager and Dr. Douglas, and worked alongside my friend, Dr. Janet Ray, and Dr. Peroni in the back. And I appreciate their service to Attleboro, to Southeastern Massachusetts, and to the Commonwealth. My first visit to BCC Attleboro goes back further um, than Dr. Douglas may know. It was in 2007, when I was teaching ESL classes at the Literacy Center, and brought my students to the BCC's first location, well, maybe the first or second, at the old Attleboro High School on County Street. And we went there to meet the one and only 
Kathy Garganta, the first dean of BC Seattle Borough. And if you know Kathy, you know that she played a pivotal role in the initial success of Bristol Attleboro's programs and campus. And it is very nice to see you here, my friend. And you haven't changed at all. I don't know what she's doing in retirement, but damn, she looks good. All right. In, in 2012, I became an employee of Bristol as the director of adult basic education further down the hall here on the second floor. And I spent four years and countless hours here on the second floor in this room and running up and down the hallway serving and supporting our adult students in their educational and career journeys. And Bristol's ongoing and unrelenting support of adult basic ed students and their programs has helped many folks in the Attleboro area advance their education and career opportunities and consequently improve the lives of their families and future generations. Education lives on and on. I moved to a different second floor office right around the corner, as Dr. Douglas said, in 2016 when I became the director of Bridgewater's, uh, Bridgewater State University Attleboro's program here, where I continued working with adult students who had either graduated from Bristol or had gotten their high school equivalency or who had left college and wanted to come back. I was helping them to get back into the groove to again further their education and college uh, career opportunities. As Dr. Douglas said, Bristol and BSU have a long, strong and successful partnership that continues to this day. And I am very proud to say that I worked for both institutions. Since becoming mayor in 2023, I have continued my relationship with Dr. Ray and the Attleboro campus and have maintained my commitment to education, to supporting your students and our residents, your programs and the Bristol community, because I know that education is the path to a better life. I know that learning never ends. And I know that Attleboro is better because of Bristol. So thanks to all of you here tonight who worked so long and so hard to bring the Bristol Community College campus to Attleboro and for making this beautiful campus a reality. Thank you for investing in believing in the residents of Attleboro and providing them with education and career pathways that enrich their lives and the community as a whole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mayor DeSimone. We are so happy that you're part of our history and we're so happy that you'd come back today for this celebration. We appreciate all you do for Bristol and for your continued support. I'd now like to invite Senator Feeney to say a few words. We're so happy that you could also make it here this evening. Thank you for your support. Well, there's not much left to say, but I'm going to give it a shot. So yeah. good evening, everybody. Good evening. It is wonderful, wonderful to be here uh, tonight as a, a guy who ended up in the state Senate who had trouble getting my high school diploma. It's tough being in a room where everybody's called doctor, but uh, I really, really uh, am honored to be here as you celebrate and uh, to be here with my colleagues in the legislature, Representative Howard, Representative Hawkins, and of course, the mayor of our city who's doing such a wonderful job here, Mayor DeSimone. Uh, President Douglas, President Spraga, uh, Don, for all of the visionaries, for all the visionaries that made this happen, who understood that it's great to have a wonderful idea, Don, as you were saying, but when so many people come together and even when they face roadblocks and challenges, they persist through that adversity to make this happen. And here we are, you know, 20 years later, and you can see the fruits of that labor. What an example that is for the people that walk through this door that we seek to educate. What an example that is for folks that want to make a difference in the lives of people in our community. Attleboro is a special, special place. It really is. It's a wonderful city made up of some great people, salt of the earth people that work hard, that deserve hope and a future. And when people come together to make something like this happen, it just exemplifies what a wonderful city this is. And to Bristol Community College, I got to tell you, you are so lucky with President Douglas. You know, in the legislature, oftentimes I was remarking to somebody today, we had over, um, and, and Jim and Steve helped me with a 7,000 bills filed, I think, in this past session alone. 7,000 bills. It's difficult, even with my ADHD sometimes, to keep track of that and, and keep all those bills in the radar screen. And we rely on people to, to you know, amplify issues that need to be amplified. And President Douglas, there is nobody better in the community college and the higher ed space 
than Lara, who knows how to find us, who reaches out, who can articulate not only what and how we need to do, but why we need to do it. And I am so, so thrilled that this year, because of her advocacy and so many of you and others throughout higher ed here in Massachusetts, that we were able to pass historic legislation to make community college free, finally in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And that, again, my friends, Mass Educate and Mass Reconnect uh, was really, again, a vision of our governor, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, the administration, uh, certainly the Senate president, if I could speak parochially for a second, our Senate president who made that a priority two sessions ago and said, we're gonna get this done. Um, but that doesn't just happen with 200 of us in Beacon Hill. It only happens when there's a groundswell of support throughout our communities. And we hear those stories of that student from North Attleboro. When we hear the stories of the people that come here with limited hope and limited options and make a difference in their lives. When we hear those stories, uh, we, can, we can invest. We can invest and, and we have done that. I just wanna end with this. Yesterday, um, this past week has been incredible for me. I, I chair the legislature's manufacturing caucus in addition to being the chair of the Financial Services Committee. And a few days ago, we had a, a great uh, ceremony of a Gillette Stadium where we celebrated manufacturing companies in Massachusetts that were putting people to work that were successful uh, in the last couple of years. And then yesterday I spoke to a panel out in Devons of about 300 employers and stakeholders as part of the Workforce Solutions Group Summit. And when I talk to them, I always get the same answer back. I always ask a question. If I had a magic wand as a state senator, what could I do for you? And of course, Taylor's all this time, first thing is always taxes. You're killing me, Feeney, with the taxes. But the second thing is, the second thing is workforce. Workers, workers, workers. And as we started to talk yesterday about kind of developing solutions and strategies for a pipeline of workers, it came up over and over and over again how important our community colleges are. And then I started to tell the stories of Bristol Community College and what it means to a city like Attleboro and what it means to our region and my district. And we started to kind of strategize around, you know, not only when we look at companies and we build to spec, we build their facilities to spec, with our community colleges, and especially here at BCC, we educate to spec, right? We figure out what those needs are in our workforce with our employers, and we educate to that. So when you think about the students that come here to Bristol Community College and out of our campus, it's not just transactional, right? The way we think about higher education is flipped on its head in a positive way here. Because it's not transactional where you give us money, we give you a degree, you go out and find a job. It's not that. At Bristol Community College, under President Douglas and President Sprager and everybody that's been a visionary here for so many years, it's not transactional, it's transformational. It's when students come here, wherever you are in your life, and it takes all paths, trust me, I know, from the bottom of my heart, that there is not a single path to success. When it takes all paths, we understand but you come here, Bristol Community College here in Attleboro, you're not just connecting people and being that pipeline to work for, to, to, to employers, which is so, so important. You're keeping Massachusetts competitive, but even more than that, you're giving a sense of purpose to people. You're giving them hope. You're giving them a future. You're allowing them to be able to go home with pride, to take care of their families, to contribute to the community, to contribute to the city of Attleboro. And that will never show up on a spreadsheet, it'll never show up on a PowerPoint, but is absolutely, absolutely immeasurable and incredibly, incredibly important. So thank you to all of you that are a part of this system. Thank you to President Douglas for all your work and for being an incredible advocate. And thank you for being here tonight to celebrate a gem in the city of Attleboro. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. And uh, for our legislators, uh, get ready for a wonderful legislative breakfast in December, early December, where we are going to report out on all of our wonder wonderful statistics on free community college, Mass Educate and Mass Reconnect. Uh, we are up in enrollment by over 21%, and that is absolutely incredible. So thank you very much for all of your support. Next, I would like to welcome Representative Hawkins to come forward to say a few words.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. And I'll repeat the same thing that Senator Feeney said. You are a force to reckon with. You keep us informed with what the needs are, what we're supposed to do, uh, and, and always in a very knowledgeable, uh, professional way so we know how we can help you. And that, that's a great testimony to your, uh, your passion for this organization. Uh, I come from a couple places. I'm a retired teacher from Attleboro High School, and I can remember from then how many programs tied in with the high school? How many different ways do you, com do you interact with the community? And there's so many ways with the high school. Now, I don't know if it's the same student, but I met a student last year who also graduated with a high school diploma and an associate's degree. But this guy was no slouch. He also was the leader in creating a student youth court where they try actual cases at the high school while he was doing all of that. So he, uh, for sure, you just changed one life in a great way. Somebody who has a wonderful future ahead of them, thanks to the work here at Bristol Community College. But the news that probably I should share rather than repeat what everybody else said is we're gonna be opening the homeless facility across the street. Uh, we have the ribbon cutting in November and then there will be people moving in. So we'll find a new way that you can, you can interact with the community and keep you busy. So thank you for all you do. Uh, everybody in the room has, has such a role in making this all happen. So thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Hawkins. And now I'd like to introduce Representative Stephen Howard to come forward and say a few words as well. Well, being the last is somewhat difficult because everything has been covered already and especially not knowing I was going to speak. So I have to really start thinking about it. Don Smith was uh, mentioning about the students getting a, a dual degree. Uh, BCC has reached out to many of the local high schools uh, to show what is offered uh, in education. Now, 20 years here is really something special. Uh, I'm gonna revert back to the campus in Fall River for a second, even though we're here in uh, Fall River, uh, excuse me, in Attleboro. Uh, that, that campus has expanded, and it, in a sense, it's all, also outgrown its area. So uh, uh, a campus like this in Attleboro is definitely needed. And it's also needed because not everyone can get to the Fall River campus. So you're moving the mountain to the students, which is very important. Now, <clears throat> I've been to a number of graduations at BCC, and it's always very interesting. And I remember specifically one time, uh, Jack Sprager was uh, talking up at, this, up at the podium, and he said, all the students that are uh, over 20 uh, stand, stand, uh, sit down. And then all the students who are first generation, or maybe it was stand up instead of sit down. Uh, and what was amazing is the number of first generation uh, educated college students that this university attracts. And they're not all 18, 19 years old. There are some students that, well, they had to go out in the workforce, and, but education was still very important to them. And they came back to BCC to get that education. And, you know, and they've got their associate's degree, and now they've been able to move forward not only in their job, but also in their education. And again, as Don Smith uh, talked about, a lot of students go to school having no idea what they wanna do. They're basically taking up uh, time and space as their uh, education uh, subjects. BCC is able to focus their, their views into a, a trade, if you will, that they can actually earn money and continue their education. And the expense of a community college is nowhere near what a private university is. So even if they go to a private university after uh, attending BCC, which many of them do, and many of them, I remember some going to Brown University and some of the other finer institutions throughout New England from BCC. So that stigma of coming to a community college is no longer there. You can come here, get a great education, and move on to a fine university, and then whatever job should you show, uh, choose. So being here is always very special to me. Being at uh, the campus is special, and the, the uh, what is it called, uh, Laura, with all the, the Connect. Oh, the Connect Partnership. The, the Connect Partnership. Now, these uh, community colleges, while they are competitive against each other, they also work very, to get, very much together because their goal is to educate our students. And that's something we can all be very proud of. 
Thank you. Yes, so thank you very much, Representative Howitt, and we are grateful for all of your support. And now to close our event, I'd like to invite our chair of the Board of Trustees, Joan Medeiros, to come forward to say a few words. Thank you, everyone. It's an honor to be here tonight, and I'm so grateful for the support you have all given to the Attleboro campus over the years. Without your dedication, we would have never been able to thrive and make a difference for so many students in our area. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I wish you all a very happy 20th anniversary. On a side note, I have to uh, make a comment. When I became chair of the trustees um, about eight years ago, one of the things I quickly discovered was that we held all of our meetings in Fall River. And so that was one of my missions. So every year we circulate our meetings and we have a meeting here in Attleboro every session and of course in Taunton and New Bedford because I think it's really important that all of the trustees are aware of our physical campuses as well versus just seeing what we do on paper. So it's been a pleasure to be doing this all these years. So now I would like to invite you to enjoy the refreshments. And for those of you who are going to the Manhattan Shore at seven, enjoy the evening and thank you so much for your support and being here tonight. Thank you.